This is Out of the Box with your host, Jonathan Clark. Out of the Box, Sunday nights at 9 on Q1043. Welcome back. Jonathan Clark in the studio with the lovely Meg Myers. Hi, Meg. Hi. How you doing? I'm really good. Thank you. Good. And we got Dan here on the guitar. Mm-hmm. Uh, the new album, Take Me to the Disco. I love that title. Uh, and on tour now, tour dates at megmyers.com. I uh, saw your show at the Mercury Lounge. Fantastic show. Thank it was you. hot and sweaty. Oh, my God. Totally packed. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, what I noticed immediately was that you were playing bass. Yeah. So my first question is, was this out of necessity or was it you just sort of leaned towards the bass growing up as opposed to the guitar? Mm, I at 13 my brother made me play bass so that i would be in his band because he needed a bass player Uh, okay but before that i was playing guitar piano and then i started playing bass and i was actually like okay yeah i love this great bass players are awesome i mean it's such a oh my god integral part of the music right i mean and to play it right obviously it it, is like the main thing yeah that was that was on actually for this record uh one of the songs was so difficult for me to learn because singing it at the same time, like the rhythm is just. I don't know done. how you guys do that. Done is how do you like, play bass and sing? I, it took I, me it, like two weeks to figure it to get it. I just had to. Boom, right. Boom, boom, uh, start incorporating my voice in a little at a time, and you just get it over time. But that's cool because it's like you can do anything. Yeah. You just practice. Ambidextrous. And, mm-hmm. um, and then when you watch guys like Sting play these ridiculous. Exactly. Like rhythms and yeah. vocal patterns, and they. It, but he just does it automatically. It's just like he does. Comes, I know he's just. I assume <laughs> way too talented. Um, yeah. Do you like spending time in New York? Um. <laughs> we are in New York, but you don't have to say that. I mean, I. You know what? I. I love things about it. I love the food. I love the culture. I have a. I have a hard time. I get claustrophobic. Yeah. With the high buildings, right? And just like. And it is an island, small, too. Everything's small where you stay. Yeah. So there's things that I love about it, but that always makes me want to be here less amounts of time. We had this conversation last week with another band. Uh, they live in L.A., and they were talking okay. about, you know, the, the wide open spaces, yeah, the same. nature. And, uh, yeah. you know, when you walk in L.A., everyone thinks, like, you have a problem or something because yeah. nobody walks in L.A. And as the missing persons wrote that great song. Yeah. Um, but you were yeah. born in Nashville. You moved around a bit growing up, Ohio mm-hmm. and Florida. Um, when you first moved to L.A., it, it's weird. I think you were like 19 mm-hmm. or something. Yeah, I had just a- turned 20, yeah. And then all of a sudden, like all these people started moving to Nashville. Yeah. Like <laughs> like the whole music, but not the whole music. It was the country music business. But the other parts of the music business were all moving, moving to Nashville. Oh, it's completely... It's just. Is that weird for you to observe that from afar now? It's. Uh, it is. Well, I. It's like your hometown. I mean. I moved back there from LA. I lived in LA from 19 to like, I don't know, 30 ish. Yeah. So I. Well, I'm 31, but I moved back there for a couple of years and I just, just moved back to LA. So when I was there, I was just like, whoa. What is happening? Just, yeah. They're I'm, building buildings on top of buildings. Yeah. It's just crazy. Yeah. Uh, this new album, you worked with uh, producer Christian Langdon. Did, mm-hmm. did you record in LA as well? I did. I uh, recorded the record in uh, Topanga and also oh, in Oh, Topanga Pasadena. Canyon? Or is that Topanga the name? Topanga Canyon, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. So good. Yeah, we rented out a place, uh, Airbnb, and it was. And really you just beautiful. moved the equipment in and just started recording, yeah, right? Yeah, he was like, he's, you know, he set it all up. Yeah. And I showed up. And, nice. Yeah, it was nice. And I was really excited because I love hiking. Yeah. But like a weekend. I was hiking and I was just like excited and I jumped over a bush and I just sprained my ankle. Oh no! So the entire making of the album, <laughs> there was like, couldn't hike. Um, <laughs> where does the title of the new album come from? I love the title. I said that before. Take me to the disco. Mm-hmm. Thank tell, you. Tell me about that title. Where does that come from? Um, it comes from the song "Take Me to the Disco," and that was the first song that we wrote on the album, and it was just it just sums up the meaning of the album the album for me, which is um. Originally, I was writing it about disconnection and checking out and escaping and like nothing wrong with that. Man. Sort of this obsession <laughs> with death, right? And well, and I, I, I think over time, when we, when we finished it later, um, I mean, we finished it months later. That was the last song that we came to, and we were like, and I had been on quite a long spiritual journey, yeah, um, that year and during the making of the record, and 
when I went back to it to finish it, I was like, oh, wow. I was actually not looking for escape and everything. It's like I'm really looking for connection, like, to myself and others and just true connection. And sometimes I think people can seem like they want to escape, but it's just you're just searching for... Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Well, as a songwriter, I think I'm, I'm jealous of songwriters for this reason, because when there are things that you are going through in life... Um, you are lucky enough to be able to put those into words Mm -hmm. and write songs and produce something to make you sort of, it must be sort of therapeutic, cathartic or whatever, to sort of like release it that way as to, you know, calling up a therapist and paying 150 bucks or something. Well, (laughs) I mean, I'm a, a, I guess I'm a tough one because I also have therapy and which I've been doing that too, but luckily my insurance covers it all. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) But that's yeah. great that you guys can do that. Yeah. Um, and you have gotten some really good press from Rolling Stone, New York Times, Cosmopolitan, Entertainment mm-hmm. Weekly, among others. Is it strange reading reviews of your music and reading their interpretations of your music? It is sometimes. Yeah. yeah. I try not to. I don't really read it that much. I stay offline a lot. Yeah. I try to. I don't blame you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, her name is Meg Myers. Her new album coming out July 22nd. Take me to the disco on tour now. MegMyers.com for all the dates. We have Dan with us who brought a beautiful guitar. Mm-hmm. Uh, you guys want to play a song for us? We would love to. Tell us about it and then just go for it. Okay. This song is called Jealousy and I spell it Jealous C. Jealous and of the C. Yeah. yeah. Um, it is, let's see, I wrote it a few years ago in my house when I was living in Nashville and I was having a tough time. I was engaged at the time, not anymore. And it was just about all that stuff. All right. Yeah. Here we go. Everything's right, everything's wrong When you call my name, I can't do the thought of always being gone When I'm wearing this ring and I wanna go out, I wanna get drunk Being in love and I don't wanna fight, but nothing makes sense anymore And I don't think I can stop the jealousy When it comes, it comes like waves and I can't breathe And I don't think I can stop the jealousy When it runs, it runs like lightning through my teeth I want you to tell me what to do Everything's right, everything's wrong When you call my name, all the hands on the clock keep moving along While we're staying the same, I don't want to go out, I want to get drunk And litter my lungs, and I know it ain't right, but nothing makes sense anymore And I don't think I can stop the jealousy when it comes, it comes like waves and I can't breathe And I don't think I can stop the jealousy When it runs, it runs like lightning through my teeth I want you to tell me what to do Stop the jealousy When it comes, it comes like waves and I can't breathe
There she is. Wow, really nice. Meg Myers playing live uh, for us here on Q104 Threes Out of the Box, along with Dan there, the new album, Take Me to the Disco, coming out July 20th. And Meg is on tour now at megmyers.com. The song that I want to play off the album is called Numb. And uh, what can you tell us about this one? And then we'll blast it off the Empire State Building for you. Yeah. Okay, well, let's see. I wrote this one when I was on my other label, and it's just about the pressures um, of originally it's about the pressures of having to write a single for the radio. Yes. And, um, well, I see, I saw the video for this song. Mm -hmm. There's like seven people fixing your hair yeah, and stuff like me. that. Yeah. Well, yeah. Going on. Very right. uncomfortable. Creepy. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's what it's about. It's about, it was, we were feeling a lot of pressure me and my producer leggy and, we went in the studio and we just wrote it about them and about the whole situation. And um, I am so grateful because I got to make this out. You know, I was able to actually make the song. The but then song I got is... off the album and I'm a uh, label and I'm on a new label now. And yeah. Yeah. All good. All good, man. Yeah. Uh, Meg Myers is her name. Take me to the disco, the new album. Everyone go out and buy it. Uh, July 20th, it's available. You can pre-order it now, I'm sure. And uh, she is on tour. Check her out by all means. MegMyers.com. Meg, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Dan, thank you. Thank you. This is Out of the Box with your host, Jonathan Clark. Out of the Box, Sunday nights at 9 on Q1043.